our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. Not too hot, not too large. Our sun is very similar to hundreds of thousands of others around our galaxy. But for us, it's very special. The sun is an enormous ball of gas. It's a star. It's our star. It radiates the light which illuminates our planet every day. It's a star which is made of 75% hydrogen and just under 25% helium. During his 18 years as science director of the European Space Agency, Roger Bonnet became a world expert on the sun, launching several major solar observation missions. Inside the sun we have what we call thermonuclear fusion reactions. These thermonuclear fusion reactions transform four atoms of hydrogen into one atom of helium. And it is this thermonuclear reaction which makes the energy, which gives the sun its light, and thus the heat, that feeds the entire solar system. The sun has a powerful appetite, consuming four million tons of matter every second. That giant furnace may look like a perfect yellow orb from Earth, but it's actually covered in what are known as sunspots. These flashes of activity appear every single day. The European Space Agency's SOHO mission was the first to photograph the entire period of what's known as the solar cycle. We noticed that the number of sunspots on the surface of the sun, the intensity of the magnetic field, varies every 11 years, going from a maximum to a minimum. Not only that, but the polarity of the magnetic field changes. The south pole becomes the north pole, and the sun only assumes its initial configuration every 22 years. Bonnet now works at the International Space Science Institute here in Bern, Switzerland, a city that was once home to the world's most famous physicist. So here we are at Einstein's house, the place where everything began, the place where Einstein invented his famous equation, E equals mc squared. It's this equation which explains how the sun radiates. Before Einstein invented this equation, we weren't able to square the age of the sun with the age of the Earth, which was odd because they were formed at practically the same time. Einstein showed that thanks to the conversion of four atoms of hydrogen into one atom of helium, the mass of the atom of helium is 2% smaller than the mass of the four atoms of hydrogen, and the 2% of mass which has disappeared, disappears in the form of light. That 2% is enough to give us literally all the energy we need. Energy that drives the weather systems and water cycle on our planet. It's also thought the sun could have a more subtle role to play in climate change. We talk about this 11-year cycle of the sun. This cycle certainly affects the upper atmosphere, the stratosphere in particular, around 35, 40 kilometers away. That's where you find the ozone layer. That's where you find the layers which absorb ultraviolet rays. And these absorbed ultraviolet rays, they fluctuate enormously with the cycle of solar activity. So there's certainly an effect on the Earth's upper atmosphere. But how this is reflected down below, that's something we don't know. Our wired world already feels the effects of solar activity in more immediate ways. Every week, clouds of highly charged plasma thrown out by the sun disrupt the Earth's magnetic field and damage electronic systems. The uh, sun's atmosphere at times accumulates um, bubbles which, like balloons, are released every now and then. These coronal mass ejections are bubbles 
of a huge amount of solar plasma. And these are released in, into interplanetary space, accelerated by the solar wind coming behind it. And most of them miss the Earth, but some of them hit the Earth. And when they hit the Earth, the uh, Earth's magnetosphere really gets into a turbulent and, and uh, messed up state. Communication satellites and power lines can be damaged by this pummeling of the Earth's electromagnetic shield. Uh, the is For millions of years, the Sun and Earth have been engaged in this delicate dance, one where outside factors can have a major impact, according to leading meteorologist Leonard Bengtsson. Five different forecast warm periods. Without any variation in the radiation of the sun, the climate of the Earth has changed significantly. But this is due to that the orbit of the Earth around the sun is irregular because it's being disturbed by the gravity from the, um, mainly from the uh, larger planets. And that uh, is actually the reason, uh, at least as far as we believe it today, for the causes of the ice ages. The Sun and its relationship with the Earth has been studied from space since the 1960s. One of the most long-lived missions was Ulysses, a European and American probe that spent 18 years flying over and studying the Sun's magnetic poles. Meanwhile, SOHO, another ESA and NASA corporation, has offered stunning pictures of the Sun's outer layers. Future missions, such as Europe's Solar Orbiter, plan to fly closer to the sun than ever before. By leaving the atmosphere of the Earth, we can see the sun in every wavelength and in every colour of the electromagnetic spectrum. But also with these extremely stable satellites, we have the ability to see over a long period of time the very small vibrations of a few centimetres, sometimes of even a few millimetres a second of the sun, which makes these tiny movements. On the scale of the sun, it's minute, but with a very detailed study of these displacements on the surface of the sun, we can understand what is happening inside. With this technique and with other observations from space, we can understand the sun from its core to its outer layer as far as the orbit of the Earth. It's extraordinary. Time is on our side as we study the Sun. Our star has enough reserves to shine for another 10 billion years to come. <laughs>